death was the king of Jerusalem, but not the earthly Jerusalem. Melchizedek was the king of the heavenly Jerusalem. Yes. This Melchizedek had no parents, he had no beginning, and he has no end. Yet, he appears to Abraham as a man. And he says, he says, take some cup, take a cup of wine and some bread. And he said, and uh, so they have a Passover service because he's telling them, he's letting them know that look, this is all about a future happening. Yeah. Abraham just killed five kings. Abraham is, sees a man who appears in front of him who has no beginning, no end. And he says, I'm the king of Satan. I'm the king of Jerusalem. He's like, there's no such thing as Jerusalem here. What are you talking about? Jerusalem is not even invented yet, but he's saying, I'm the king of Jerusalem. What Jerusalem? The heavenly Jerusalem. Now, if El Shaddai appeared before Abraham as a man, Listen to this closely now. If Abraham appeared, if, if Melchizedek appeared to Abraham as a man, being El Shaddai in the flesh, what did El Shaddai, why did El Shaddai need, need Mary? What was the purpose? If God can just appear on the earth as a man, what's the purpose of, of having a baby being born through Mary? The blood. And this is, the, this is the understanding. If you're going to redeem someone, you have to redeem them of the same gender. Right. An angel can't redeem a man. Only a man can redeem a man, but he has to be a relative. Jesus is called our kinsman redeemer. Yeah. Nobody's why he's called a kinsman? Because he was born through a woman, just like all of us. So he becomes our kinsman, and he's our redeemer. So he is our kinsman redeemer. He was born through a woman. Why? Because for him to redeem us, he has to have the same bloodline as us. Yeah. So Jesus ends up having a human bloodline through Mary, but a divine bloodline through the Father Jesus, yeah. through the Father God. Yeah. But now he is able to redeem you because now he's a kinsman of yours. Right. And that's the only way you can be redeemed. So this is what Christ says in, uh, in chapter 14. He's talking to Christians now, so if you're not a Christian, don't include yourself. Well, if you're a church goer, okay. It says, do not let your heart be troubled. Why are you still here on earth, right? Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Here, in the Jerusalem of heaven, there's many mansions. Okay? In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you I'm going to take you to be with me, uh, to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Where is Jesus right now? Jesus was here. He died on the cross. But Jesus says, okay, I have to go back to my father now. Jesus goes back to the new Jerusalem in the invisible city, what we call where the angels are innumerable. And he becomes, he sits on the throne and says, I'm back where I, I'm supposed to be. I've already done the job I, was, I did on earth. I've already died for their sins. I've already redeemed them. So he comes back. But Jesus says, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going back there to prepare a place for you. So he comes back here and he starts building. And he says, you know, Sam, he likes fireplaces. So make him a little fireplace over here. And you know how much he likes to, you know, read. So make him a little nice bottle. And he's building my place. And so here, to us, it's not logical. Like, how's he building a house 
in a place that's invisible. It's not invisible to them, it's invisible to us. Right. Because we don't live in eternity, right. we live in time. Right. So Jesus Christ is there and he's building you a home. Yes. Now, this is not scripture, but I'm gonna show you what the Lord told me. Sometimes, in the middle of building, they stop because of a person's lifestyle. Because why build a home for somebody who's not coming? Understand? You're trying to live this godly life is a struggle. You have to win this. This is a this is a fight. Yeah. You have to win this. This is not a pushover. Right. Satan ain't no jump. He's been in a lot of fights with human beings. And the majority of them, he's won. Right. You know why? He knows you love to sin. And he's just right there waiting to give you some. Right. So here he is. He's fighting to keep you away from what Christ is building for you in the kingdom of God. Yeah. So Christ is back here building, and he's saying, now this is what he says. He says, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. So Christ wants you to be where? In heaven. In heaven where he is. If there's no rapture, and Christ just comes back to the earth, that means Christ did not tell the truth by saying that I want to come and take you to be where I am. Right, right, right. So there is a rapture because Christ in his own words says, I'm coming back to take you so you can be where I am. Amen. So God wants to take you where he is. Yes. But, as he's building for you, is he going to stop? Will he stop his building? Will he stop building what he's planned for you because of your lifestyle? Because you were once walking in Christ and you turned away from Christ. God has a plan, but your plan is in eternity. Your plan is with God. Your plan is in the wealth that he had before he made an earth. And if you understand who you are, you won't let Satan steal that from you because you know that God has something greater planned for you. Right. So there are many sins that God will stop building for you. And so we go places, we meet somebody and we say, oh, you're so fine, you know, you're so handsome. And you say, we don't need to get married. Let's just have fun. And they say, stop the building. Stop the building process. Let's see what they do. And so you stay in sin, and you stay in sin, and they're like, there's no place here for that person. You die in your sin, and you go before God, and they say, open the books. And they said, the name was taken out. Because the Tarprasim angels, they are there to scribe, as scribes, to make sure they record what's going on. So in the state that you're at, they're recording what's going on. So they, they, you get there and they realize that now your name that was once put in the book is now no longer in the book because of a change of lifestyle. This whole thing is about to play out in 2010. And it is up to you whether you're going to make it into the kingdom or not. Because God wants to know whether you love him or you hate him. And if you love him, you'll be obedient. And if you hate him, you'll do what you want to do. But God is looking for obedience. He's looking for a change of life. He's looking for you not to be a church or somebody who is, who is going to church and has no relationship with God. We have a glorious future ahead of us if we remain in Christ rooted and built up in his word. Praise God. Amen.